Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to this presentation in which I will show you everything that I've been able to learn in regards to how to get more views and subscriptions on YouTube. So where does all this information come from? It doesn't actually come from what I do. It comes from looking at what I consider to be the best video bloggers on the Internet, both in the past and in present days, and exactly what they do. More specifically, I'm going to go through everything a guy named Zay Frank did to generate a huge commotion on the internet and get tons and tons of views. So I'm going to really focus in on Zay Frank. And if you want to see a mashup of Zay Frank, it's in the underbar. Just click on that link. So what am I going to specifically cover? Well, I'm going to talk about topics that are the most popular to cover in video blogging, how you should video yourself and how you should best edit your videos to increase views and likes, and how to increase your overall comments, likes, and video responses. Here's a tip for you. Don't do what I'm doing. For example, presentation style video videos are considered to be quite boring. However, this is just the way that I do things. So there's a tip for you. You definitely want to show your face. Again, like I said, I don't do these things, but there is not a successful video vlogger out there who doesn't consistently show their face. You want to edit your videos very heavily. You want to edit out every single pause and Zay Frank even edited out every single blink he made. You want to keep your videos extremely short, being about three to three and a half minutes in length seems to be the sweet spot. Never go over four minutes. You want to constantly reestablish your overall brand for your show. You want to do everything you can possibly do to get viewers to interact with you, both in comment sections, video responses, and you want to post as many videos as possible. Shoot for posting a video every single day if that is at all possible for you. Now, in regards to Zay Frank, he was a neurosurgeon by trade, and I think that he used pretty much everything he knew about how the brain works in his videos. The best thing you can really do if you want to get good really, really fast is just study all of the big shot people, all the people that are already getting views, and just blatantly copy them. I have this thing inside of me that won't allow me to do that, but that doesn't mean that this thing inside of me is right. Fact is, almost everybody who's successful on the internet, to a certain extent, copied off of somebody that preceded them, and that's pretty much true. In life. If you have a problem with this, just make videos that you know that only you will see. Blatantly copy somebody else's video and then watch it and see what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong and how you can overall improve. So make a script of exactly what they do in their video, exactly what they say in their video, maybe even special effects they use in their video, and then blatantly copy it, watch it, and then see what specifically you're doing wrong that makes your videos less funny than this almost exact video. This will help you really hone in on exactly what you're good at and what you need to improve on. Again, use a script. Most of the big time people do. If you don't know what to talk about, just look for the hottest news subjects and talk about them. And some places you can look are the Huffington Post, Yahoo, Posts the most popular news articles of the day. Daily Mail is a London-based website that posts a lot of really salacious and interesting topics. Oddly enough, there's a Reuters website that posts all kinds of funny stories. Then you have the Daily Beast. Technorati posts, again, most popular articles. And then, of course, you could look at Google Trends and Google Insight. Another thing that Zay Frank would often do is chase away or made it seem as if he was trying to chase away new viewers. For example, he would start off a video saying that he was going to go over common German phrases. What this does is it creates a general feeling that the viewers of the video are in a private club. And on a psychological level, this is extremely powerful. You want to then address all of your viewers as club members. He addressed all of the viewers of his videos as sports racers and established a brand which was a rubber duck and further reestablished that brand by having viewers submit drawings of the sports racer logo or the rubber duck. Then what you want to do or what he did was establish the brand in a way that it represented the group in a way that he was the leader. He often referred to himself as knowledge. Then he referred to sports racers and then on top of that his best converts or his best viewers or those people who were most willing to interact with him were called members of what he called the League of Awesomeness. You then want to use catchphrases such as, here's a catchphrase he often used, I've got the walnut, show me the baby. Again, watch the mashup and you'll get an idea of exactly some of the neat things he did. You want to involve the viewers in your show, so you could do things like show submitted art, or pay reference to comments or any videos that the viewers had sent in to you. This is what I mean by how you should film your face. What you have to understand is most people are going to view these videos. I know this is kind of a nasty picture, but I just drew it real fast. See how the top of the head and the bottom of the chin are cut off? This is what is considered in general one of the best ways to film yourself in YouTube videos. And if you look at most of the big guys, this is roughly where their head angle 
is. And I'm of the belief if a lot of popular people are doing something, chances are there's a reason they're doing it. Again, edit out any pauses. Never make your viewers have to wait for anything to happen. And don't worry about when you're editing out these pauses that your video seems kind of jerky. It actually seems like people like these jerky movements. Act as if you're talking to one person and not a crowd of people. Again, keep videos short. And then on top of that, you should get even better responses if you segment these short three to three and a half minute long videos into smaller segments so that it seems like everything in the video is constantly changing for the people that are watching it. So one of the reoccurring segments in the Zay Frank videos was something from the comments and then he would read something from his comments. How do you get more comments and likes? I talked about this in a previous video, but I'm gonna go through this because a lot of people sent me questions they didn't understand what I was talking about. What you wanna do is go out of your way to read any comments people leave in your comment section, especially if they're funny. And what Zay Frank did was kind of ingenious at the time. This might seem manipulative at this point in time, but what he would do is he would post whatever the last comment was if the person also liked his video, and here's a demonstration down here. Let's say that Jimmy, also Jimmy has no idea that it's 30 seconds till the show, but he posts last in the comment section, and he's excited. Yay, I'm king of the comments. Okay, that's 30 seconds till the show. Well, Paul, wanting to be the king of the comment, goes into the comment section and posts again. Now it's 20 seconds till the show. And then Mark jumps in, trying to be the king of the comments, and posts five seconds before the show. Mark wins. Mark is the king of the comments. This was a Zay Frank thing that he did. And also there was a queen of the comments. So what this does, I think you can see very quickly, would generate an immense number of comments because people don't know when your show's going to start. How he was able to get a lot of video responses was to be a member of the League of Awesomeness. You were required to upload a video of yourself doing something goofy, which he called a power move. So that was one way that he increased his video responses. Also, you could offer prizes to anybody that issues a video response. Free advertising. Say that you will post a link to their channel, for example, if they post a video response, or you will pick somebody at random and talk about their channel if they post a video response, or you could do the obligatory question of the day, which is what a lot of people do. And of course, you want to reward people by showing any video responses in your video. Another way to increase activity is to get people to do funny things, like he had the Earth Sandwich Project, which was one person on one side of the world would input their latitude and longitude of where they would put a piece of bread and then a person exactly on the opposite side of the world was supposed to lay another piece of bread. There was just a goofy sort of interactive things that not many people do online. Another thing you can do is show other vloggers and cross advertise. So let's say that there's a vlogger who gets a lot of traffic but you still get a half decent amount. One thing you could do is pay reference to that other video vlogger that other people might not know about and then send your viewers over to that vlog and say, for example, Zay Frank sent me here. That's sort of like a way to sort of break into somebody else's video vlog and take some of their traffic and bring it over to you. Also, you could allow viewers to control your show. Say Frank had a system where, that he called Fabuloso Friday that he would allow viewers to tell him exactly what he had to do every single Friday. Then he would build a show based off of what his subscribers wanted him to do. And again, in regards to content, you want to mix serious news and comedy. Back and forth, back and forth. People love change. Just to show all about news with no comedy is boring, and just to show all about comedy is might get kind of stale as well. But if you switch them back and forth, it gets kind of interesting. Take viewers on trips. I'd love to see what Australia or Africa or whatever looks like. Show people what your town looks like. It's interesting. It really is. Then again, you can create music videos. However, you wouldn't want to use copyrighted content because it would just get banned by YouTube eventually. And again, further ways to segment the show that would be effective would be to use a theme song or a funny name for a segment. And here are some Zay Frank show segments. Things I like that are gay and say the opposite and something in the comments, which I mentioned before. Again, you could attack people that the majority of people don't like. Another thing he would do that would be interesting and break up the show is he would show a picture and then he would make up a story about it. Like, for example, shown here, President Bush pictured wishing he had a mustache. It was kind of just a funny, weird thing to do that helped break up the show. You could also talk about imaginary co-workers. And, of course, you want to end your show with an interesting catchphrase. His was thinking so you don't have to. And... On the right side of the screen, it's kind of blurry, but I thought I'd show some of my most popular videos. And what you'll also see here is the thumbnails associated with those videos also were very, very interesting. The fact is, is if you have a nice thumbnail, chances you're going to get more views goes up dramatically. And only partners are allowed to define their thumbnail, but there's nothing keeping you from using interesting pictures throughout your presentations, which will dramatically increase the odds that you will get 
a nice thumbnail in the end. Of course, use good titles. Don't use music. People do not like it. That was one of the most common complaints I got on all of my videos is my use of music. You think it sounds great, but it really, I guess, doesn't. And I've also been irritated by music in other people's presentations. Do use transitions. For some reason, people are really into transitions. Use the annotations to drive people to your channel as well as to subscribe to you and also to other videos that are common in interest to the current video you're filming. Put all of your videos that have anything to do with each other into playlists so the odds are better that somebody's going to continue watching other videos that you have made on subjects that are similar to the current video. And also watch what everybody else is watching and see what's good about it. List down on a piece of paper, why did I like this video? And then try to incorporate those into your videos. And then basically the end is just practice, practice, practice and like doing what you're doing. That's the only way you're ever going to make a lot of videos. So that's pretty much everything I know about how to increase your overall traffic on your videos. Again, I don't do a lot of these things just because I can't really copy. It's something that's like inside of me. If you have any other questions or comments, leave them below and I will do my best to answer them. Otherwise, till next time.